Now let's quickly talk about IPv4 private versus public IP addresses. So what had happened was because as I mentioned, IPv4, there was this real scare many, many years ago in the IT community about running out of IP addressing space. And it's real, right? Because we have a lot of devices, a lot of people online, and we're running out of IPv4. So they, we had to come up with some clever, smart way of dealing with this situation. So what had happened was an RFC 1918 was published and it defined what's called a private IPv4 address ranges. And these addresses can only be used on the LAN. They're not routable on the internet. And as a matter of fact, the service providers have filters in place to draw packets on their internet routers if the packets are sourcing from private IP address range. And I'll explain that momentarily. And here are the three private IP address ranges that you must memorize for the exam. The first range starts with 10.0.0.0 and ends in 10.255.255.255. It's a slash eight. It's defined in RFC 1918. The next range is 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255. It's a slash 12 or 12 bit. And the third one is 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255. That's a slash 16. If you see these IPs configured on your devices, then that means that your devices are configured to take advantage of private IP addressing space. As a matter of fact, I would be willing to bet that most of the environments that you are aware of today, including your home network, a coffee shop, your office, whatever have you, you're gonna see IP addresses in one of these ranges. Should never be outside of these ranges unless you're talking about a data center where you have servers and you know things of that nature, even servers you don't actually have public IPs configured on them, you would actually configure private IPs on the servers and then use another clever technique that we'll talk about in a moment to, to magically mask the private to the public IP. But the bottom line is that these are the private IP address ranges that you must memorize not only for the exam, but it's a very real world topic because that's how you configure your LAN or local area network. And as I mentioned, what ends up happening is if you're using these private networks in any of these ranges, 192, 10.0, or the 172.16 range that we talked about, as those packets go out and they hit your ISP router, Right, so this could be, for example, your Comcast device at your home. This could be your, your cable modem. And then behind your cable modem, of course, you'll have your router. If that router that you have at home sends this IP, 192.168.1.0, out to the ISP router, the ISP router will actually discard this packet. It's not gonna send it forward. Reason being, these are private IP address ranges. They have no business of being available on the internet because like I said, the RFC standard specifically called out that these IPs are not allowed to be routed on the internet. So they do not route on the internet. They cannot become part of the internet routing table. So you have to get creative to do something about it. And let me show you how we can get past this challenge. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.